The Track Changes feature, when you turn it on for a document, like let's say this one here, will keep track of any changes that anybody makes to this document in the color red. Well, it doesn't have to be red. You can go ahead and change those options, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But before I show you that, it's a good idea to set up the user information for your document here, or for all of Office, as we learned in an earlier training video, because when you make a change, it'll tie your name to that change, which is a good idea because if you're collaborating with a bunch of people on the same document, and they all make changes to it, when you hover over a change, it'll pop up that user's name. So you can go ahead and ask them why they made the change or what their point was behind the change in any case. To go ahead and set the user information up, come up here, click on the File tab, go down to Options. There's the General tab selected by default. Just come down here, and there it is, Username and Initials. Go ahead and type in your name and initials, click Okie Dokie, and let's go ahead and come up here, click on the Review tab, and there it is, the Tracking Group. All you have to do to turn this feature on is click on the Track Changes button, or you can click on the drop-down arrow and click on, well, Track Changes there as well. But before we do that, let's take a look at the tracking options, click on it. By default, when it comes to marking up a document, you know, inserting text, deleting text, changing lines, making comments, the formatting for inserting text is that it'll be underlined. You can go ahead and change it to some other format. I'll leave it underlined. It'll also have the color by the author. I can change that and say any insertions made by anybody will be in the color blue. Also, any deletions will have a strike through it. And instead of the color by author, we'll say all deletions will be in the color red. And so you can go through this in each section for any moves or table cell highlighting or formatting or balloons, how you want to keep track of it with the different colors and options. When you're finished, go ahead and click OK and come up here, click on the button. When you click on it, it highlights it. That means the tracking feature is now on. So any changes that I make, like if I add text, as you recall, it has the two formats applied to it. It colors it in blue and underlines it. If I delete any text, colors it red and puts a strike through it. Doesn't get rid of it. That way we can still keep an eye on what the original text was and not guess, hmm, what was here before? Well, we know what it was because it still has the word there. But the intent was, was to get rid of it. In fact, it's probably a good idea when you make changes that if somebody needs a little bit of a feedback instead of just deleting something, maybe replacing it with something, you can make a comment by coming up here on the review tab to the comments group and wherever your cursor's at, you can leave it there next tonight or you can go ahead and select it and then come up here and click on new comment and then it adds the comment over to the side it says it's a comment so there's user information coming in the initials KK and because it's my first comment it has the number one see the cursors flashing within the comment balloon just go ahead and start typing you know like I don't like night please use something else you can even hover over your change and it gives you a pop-up something a little bit bigger to read than looking over into that uh, margin there so it says who made the change, when they made the change, what time, and the comment, I don't like night, please use something else. And then, of course, you can hover over those changes that don't have comments, like the text we just added. It said who added the text, when they added the text, and, well, what was inserted. Well, there it is, add text. So when I hand this off to somebody else, and they make changes to it, and add any comments to it, which we'll learn in the next training video, I'll get a little bit more detailed there because later on after they make all the changes you want to be able to learn how to accept and reject those changes in any case when you hand it off to somebody else they could easily come up here and click on the button to deselect it so they can go ahead and add text and delete text and it wouldn't keep track of it which wouldn't be good because any changes that they make you want to keep track of right if you're concerned about that then don't use the option here instead on the review tab to the protect group Click on Restrict Editing, then come down here and check number two, Editing Restrictions. Click on the drop down arrow and say you want Tracked Changes. Click on Yes, you want to start enforcing it. Type in the password PASS, PASS, hit Enter. So any changes they make, it'll keep track of it. So if they start typing, you can see, well, it's kind of tiny, but typing there is highlighted, it's being tracked. But unless they have the password, they can't go ahead and deselect the track changes. They have to come over here. And click on stop protection and like I said if they don't have it but if they do go ahead and hit enter then they can go ahead and delete make changes to the uh, document and no big deal I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the task pane here and clean this up as you recall in the previous training video we learned how to turn on the track changes feature which means that anytime that anybody makes changes to the document you'll keep track of it like any insertions or added text, it'll keep track of it in blue with an underline. Any deletions, it'll keep track of it in red with a line through it. 
Also, I asked Mr. Humphreys to go ahead and make some changes and add some comments to some of the changes so you can see the difference between his comments and mine. Mine are in red, his are in purple. And if we had somebody else collaborating on this document, when they insert a comment, it'll be in a different color as well. So that way, you can go ahead and hover over it. Gives you a pop-up, gives you the full name of the user who made the change, and also, of course, the date and time. And here's some changes down here with no comments, again, by Mr. Humphreys here. Now, when going through the document, let's say we have five people that are collaborating on this, and I only want to see the reviews from one person, then come up here, click on the Review tab, go to the Tracking group, click on the Show Markup drop-down arrow, go to the Reviewers, and go ahead and uncheck which person that you don't want to review, so I'd uncheck myself. It gets rid of the uh, review, but not the text or the changes that I made, okay? So I added text, add text is still there, but it just unhighlights it, so I'm not focusing on that review. Just these reviews that are highlighted by Mr. Wilberforce. So if I come back up here, click on Show Markup, go back to Reviewers and say, I want to see everybody. Then it highlights the changes that were made, not only by Mr. Humphreys, but also by me. Now, once I get this document back and I'm like, oh boy, there's some things I'd like to keep, some things I'd not like to keep. Well, first of all, I'm going to come up here and click on Track Changes to turn it off. So if for any reason I add some additional text, I'm not tracking it myself. With that off, I want to come back up here on the Review tab to the Changes group and go ahead and go from one change to the next and then accept or reject that change. So for me, I want to start in the upper left-hand corner on the first page so I can go from top to bottom. So I can go ahead and click Next. It goes to the very first change, well, that I made. And I can go ahead and accept it where it said Add Text or Reject It. If I go ahead and click on Reject, it gets rid of it, okay? And it goes to the next change where Night was deleted. I can go ahead and accept it or reject it. You also have a drop-down arrow. So instead of just accepting and rejecting one change at a time, you can go ahead and say reject all changes in the document, but that's something I don't recommend, unless you're positive that you're not going to accept any changes that anybody suggested or made, okay? Then, of course, you have reject and move to the next, which is just like clicking on the button here, and then this one rejecting change without moving to the next. I'm going to go ahead and click off. So I'm going to go ahead and reject that change, go to the next one, and then it also gets rid of the comment that was tied to that uh, change. So let's see, years, pains, and hardships. If I accept it, that change, it gets rid of hardships because he deleted it. So if I click on it, it deletes it, still has the comment, and the suggestion for the comment says to use a synonym, adversities. So I can go ahead and click in here and say years, pain, and... See, that way, since I don't have my track changes on when I type it in, it's not going to highlight it or keep track of it. That's good. Okay, let's continue on. Let's click Next. And it's got the comment. doesn't have any changes, just a comment that's been added. So I can go ahead and, well, if I click on reject the comment, it gets rid of it. Let me go ahead and hit undo. You can actually also come over here in the comments section and delete the comment. does the same thing. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, next change. And notice how he added the space. I mean, unless you zoom in on the document, you can barely see that little blue underline because it looks like that the SO had no space between that and the AR. So he added the space, so it says, and so are the sores. And added the E after AR. So I want to go ahead and accept it so it keeps the space between those two words. And also, he added the letter E, which, okay, without the E, it wouldn't make sense. So I'll go ahead and accept that. And then it says, okay, we searched from that point down on. Do you want to start at the beginning of the document to see if we missed anything? I can go ahead and click and say yes. And it takes me back to the comment that I can go ahead, accept or reject it, or, you know, just delete it. Which brings up a good point. If somebody doesn't make any changes but just adds a bunch of comments, Instead of going ahead and using the uh, previous and next in the changes group, you can use previous and next in the comments group, and then just go ahead and delete the uh, comments as you go through it. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. And if you have a comment in there, and you want to go ahead and comment on somebody else's comment, then just put your cursor in there, and then come up here, click on new comment. And what it does is it adds, well, of course, a comment. So as far as the comments go, it's one, two. But this, R1, means it's a response to what comment? Well, number one. If it was an R3, it would be a response to, well, comment three. And comment three would probably be somewhere down here. And maybe two up above, because it goes sequentially, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on. And then, of course, go ahead and type in, what else you got? I don't like adversities. And then, of course, you can go ahead and delete the comments. You know, click on delete, delete your own. With the comment selected, just click in it and go ahead and click delete as well. As you recall in the past couple of training videos, we learned about the Track Changes feature where when you turn it on for a document, like my original here, Poem A, 
it'll keep track of any changes that anybody makes to that document in the color red or whatever color you choose. Well, what if you forgot to turn that on and you want to keep track or notice the changes that somebody makes to it? So if I send this off to uh, somebody and then they send it back to me and they forgot to turn on the track changes, instead of saving it and overwriting my original document, POM A, I'm going to go ahead and save it as POM B. So now I have my original and then I have the copy that somebody made changes to. Well, what I could do the long way is to go ahead and open up POM A, and then coming up here on the File tab and also opening up on my desktop over here, POM B, double click, and I have two of them. You can see I've got a button down here, one for each window that's opened. I can click on this one, look at it, click on that one, look at it, and I'm just going back and forth getting really dizzy. Or I can come up here, click on the View tab, go to Arrange All, and it will split it into the top part of the screen's POM B, and down at the bottom is the original POM A. I can go ahead and scroll and scroll down and just look back and forth in between the two. And you can see right off the bat the title um, for Poem B, the change that was made. Instead of down in the original, there is no other way. Up here it says, there's no way. In any case, that can be very time consuming going back and forth. So instead, let me go ahead and close out of Poem B, maximize Poem A. We can use the compare or combine feature. Now they're pretty much the same, except that when it comes to combining, you can actually combine more and more documents where a compare you can only compare two documents. Well let me show you. Come up here, click on the review tab, go to the compare group, click on the compare drop down arrow, and there you go. Compare is two versions. Combining is two or more. And basically they're both combining or merging the changes made into one document. So let's go ahead and start with just two versions, comparing, click on that. Opens up a window and it says, okay, where's your original document? Go find it. So we click on the Browse button, and it's on the desktop here. Click on it. It's POM A. Double click. There we go, POM A. And then the revised document, whoever made changes to the original document, but now it's a copy of the original. That's POM B. You can either click on the Browse button or click on the drop-down arrow. If it's one of the most recent documents you've been looking at, go ahead and select it or just click Browse here. Opens it up again, and double click on POM B. And then if you made a mistake like, oops, POM B is the original, or and POM A is the revised, Instead of, you know, selecting these again, just go ahead and click the switch button and boom, there you go. Poem B is now the original and Poem A is the revised. Boom, there you go. Really fast, huh? Before I go ahead and click OK, you can click on the More button and you get a lot of options when it comes to the comparison settings. You can compare the moves, the comments that were made, you know, changes that you want to keep track of. And then down at the bottom, do you want to show the changes at character level or word level? Word level is easier for me. And then where do I want to show the changes in? A new document? The revised document, which is going to be this one right here, it will show the changes in there, or the original. I like it in the new document, that way I leave the original and revised untouched. So if I want to go ahead and save the new document, it would be the third document. And again, it won't overwrite the original or the revised. So leave the defaults alone, just go ahead and click OK. Opens up a new window. We have the comparison between these two documents, the original, you can see that up in the title bar here, and the revised. And then it shows all the differences between the two. And then up in the title bar, it's a new document. It has a generic name, Compare 1, because we haven't saved it yet. In any case, just like we learned in the previous training video, you can see all the changes here. You can accept or reject them by coming up here on the Review tab to the Changes group and clicking Next, going to the first change and saying, OK, do you like that? Deleting other way? No, I want to go ahead and reject that. Do you want it to have way? No, I want to reject that as well. And you just keep going through that, OK? Pretty simple. You can also come over here in the review pane and click in there and make changes as well. Like where it says streaks, you can actually delete the S and then it will update it in the uh, compare document. Okay, you also have up here in the tracking group is the final show markup. You can hover over it, read more about it, but you can basically click on the drop down arrow and have the final show of the markups that have been changed to the document or just show the final without the markups what it would look like if you accepted all the changes, or you can click on the drop down arrow and go to original show markup, or finally what the original looked like before it actually had any markups, okay? Let's see, last couple of things here is you have the reviewing pane, which shows over to the left hand side. You can click on the drop down arrow, have it horizontal at the bottom there, or you can just go ahead and close out of it and not see it all together, in which case I'm gonna go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and show the final show markup, so I can see all the changes that the other documents have made into the compare document in the middle here and again accept or reject those changes. Also I can go ahead and close out of these other windows here or just click on the compare drop down arrow go to show source documents 
And instead of showing both the sources, the original and the revised document, I can say just go ahead and show the original. So I just have two windows, the comparison between the original and the revised, and then the original, or you know, click on the drop down arrow, show revised. So the combination between the two, and then just the revised, or click on the drop down arrow, you get the point. We can go ahead and show both or hide the source documents. So we just have the one document here that's comparing both the original and the revised. That way I don't have my text scrunched here and I can just look at the uh, comparison between the two and again go ahead and click next and accept or reject the changes. Reject and let's see change a boy to a dude. Well we'll go ahead and reject that. Doesn't sound as fancy. Reject the changes. Okay. When we're done all we have to do is go ahead and click on the save button. Click on the desktop. You know name it whatever I want to name it and go ahead and click save and that's it. Let me go ahead and click cancel and close out and not save that and go ahead and close out of Pome so we're back to where we started. So we have our original, the revised one that somebody else made a change to, and then we have a copy of the original that somebody else, another person, not the same person for Pome B, but another one for Pome C that made changes to it. So if I go ahead and open up Pome A again and I go back to the review tab and I want to go ahead and compare, again this only does it for two versions. If you try to do it for a third version, then what's going to happen is going to say, well, I can't handle all this, so I'll just go ahead and assume one of the documents here has already been accepted, all the changes, and just merge that in there. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Instead, I would go ahead and use the Combine feature. Let me show you. Click on Combine. It's the same window here, basically. All you have to do is go ahead and click on and find your original document, which is Poem A. Double click. And of course, the Revise. Click on it. We'll do Poem B again, and then go ahead and leave the defaults there and click Okie Dokie. It opens it up. Now because I hid the source documents, the original and revised, it's remembering that because Microsoft Word is still open. But I can go back and click on the compare button, go down to show source documents and say both, and then it opens it up and there you go. That helps you to feel more comfortable. You can also come up here and click on the reviewing pane so it displays it either below or to the uh, left hand side here. So you can see here there's really no difference between the combine and compare, except when it comes down to looking at A and B, and the differences between the two, and I also want to pull in a third document, C. Compare won't do it without some limitations, but Combine will happily go ahead and merge that in. So the title of the uh, document here is Combine One Results. So when I come back up here and I go down to Combine, the original document is not going to be Combine One. It's combining these two A and B together. So I'll go ahead and click on the drop down arrow because I haven't saved it yet, but it will display it in the most recent uh, documents list here. I just have to scroll down and look for Combine. Results 1, there it is. Select it, and then go ahead and pull in Document or Poem C. Go ahead and click on the drop down arrow, click Browse, there it is on the desktop, Poem C, double click, and then go ahead and click OK. Now went ahead and it merged those changes that it found in Document C into the Combine 1 over here, and now we have a new window, it's Combine 4. So there's Combine 1 with Document C displaying the changes over here in the Combine Results 4 document. And again, you can go ahead and make changes over here if you like, add some text, delete some text, or better yet, what I like doing is closing out of here, and in fact, closing out of these others so I don't see that, but just see the results of everything that's been combined, because that way I can see it in larger text without these other windows. And then going up here on the Review tab to the Changes group and going to Next, Accepting, Rejecting, you know, Reject, and Reject, and going through, and when you're finished, go ahead and be sure to save your work, click on the Save button, Save it to my desktop and say this is um, Palm. Click Save. Going to go ahead and close out and close out of these others here that I have opened. So on the desktop, I have my original. I have the copy of the original, Palm B, Palm C, that other people made changes to it. I use the combine feature to combine, well, these two into one and then to combine that one into these two to get the final one, Palm Revised. And if that's a lot to follow, then you want to go ahead and replay the video. I wish I could do it in slow motion, but I can't. So go ahead and play it back. Now the next few training videos assume that you have access to a SharePoint server. Okay, first of all, what is SharePoint? Well, SharePoint is a Microsoft software program that is installed on a server, which is accessible anywhere there's internet connection, but only to those whom you give permission to. Now there's two ways you can go about setting up SharePoint. You can either hire an IT person, get the server and the software SharePoint, and have them set it up, you know, username, passwords, settings, or 
you can go ahead and search the internet and find a company that will host SharePoint and have it set up for you. And all you have to do is just go ahead and set up the username and password, you know, keep it pretty simple. Of course, that's going to be a monthly fee. In any case, you can check all that out. But for this training video, I have it uh, already hosted by a company that I'm using here, so I don't have to go through all the trouble setting it up. And the purpose of these next few training videos is that, assuming it's already set up, this is what you can do with it, okay? So I have this document here for this training video, and we're going to be doing what's called co-authoring with SharePoint. It means that I can upload this document and have the settings set or changed to where anybody else who accesses this document can actually access it at the same time that I'm working on it. In fact, you can have two, three, four, a lot of people access this document simultaneously. So any changes they make, when I click Save, will bring over those changes and I can see it and vice versa. So let me go ahead and go to my uh, SharePoint site by coming down here and opening up Internet Explorer. And then coming up here in the URL and typing in the address, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, start typing in share, there it is. Because I've been to the site before, sharepoint.kkershaw.com, you can see it's in the list down below that I can just go ahead and click on it, and it takes me right to it. So I have my username already displayed there. If I didn't, I'd type it in, and then just all I have to do is go ahead and type in the password. And then go ahead and select Remember My Credentials, click Okie Dokie, and it logs me in. Cool. Now, in short, SharePoint, well, it's just like a website, welcome to your site. And you've got all these links where you can go ahead and share documents, also create other libraries like Essential Oils and share documents there. In any case, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to go to the Share Documents folder here. And here are all the documents that I'm sharing, and I can add new documents. But before I do that, I want to come up here on the uh, Contextual tab for the Share Documents folder and go to the Library, click on that. Because over here in the Settings group, I'm going to go ahead and click on Library Settings. And the reason why that you want to go ahead and change your versioning settings for the Share Documents folder here, you can see where I'm at. There's my home page. There's the Documents folder. Here's the Settings for the Documents folder. And I'm drilling down to the versioning settings, which we'll go over in the next training video. But there's a setting in the versioning settings that when I click on it, that will prevent me from sharing my documents simultaneously with one, two, three, or gazillion other users, I suppose. I haven't tested a gazillion. And it's down here at the bottom. Right now, the default setting for the Shared Documents folder requires the document to be checked out, which means only one person can work on that document. If I want two or more people, then I have to say, no checkouts required, because then you have to wait for that person to check it in for you to work on it, and then you check it in before somebody else can access it. OK, set it to no. Go ahead and click OK. And now we change the settings for the Shared Documents folder. To get back to the Shared Documents folder, you can either come up here. Of course, there's the address, my home page. Share Documents folder and the settings for the Share Documents folder. Click on that link or just come over here in the navigation pane and click on Share Documents. It doesn't matter. It takes me back to it. There are Share Documents. Click on that. Same page here, okay? And now I can go ahead and work on any one of these documents here while somebody else is working on it simultaneously. But to show you how to go ahead and upload a document, if you want to upload documents to the SharePoint site, go ahead and click on the link Add Document opens up the window and it says OK. Go out and browse and find the document on your computer that you want to upload to the SharePoint site. Click Browse. Go to my desktop and then I come over here in the main window. A lot of large icons. Let me go ahead and shrink them up by clicking on the uh, More Options drop down arrow and say List. So all the icons get smaller and that can fit into the window here. It's in my Exercises folder as you recall. Double click. And it's going to be my co-author SharePoint. Double click. That's the document. There it is. It's the address pointing right to it. So when I click OK, it'll go ahead and upload it. And you want to keep an eye on this. It'll overwrite existing files. In other words, if there's another document in there with the same name, it'll overwrite it. So I'm not worried about it because this is the first time I'm uploading it. Click OK, dokie, and then give it a second while it uploads it. And there it is. Hey, it's new. Isn't that fancy? And it's pretty much that simplistic. If I want to go ahead and start working on my document, just click on the link and it'll open it up. But if I want to notify my coworker, Carrie, that it's now available, I can email her, and this is how you do it. Notice that when I hover over any one of these files, over to the left-hand side, it has a corresponding checkbox. I'm going to go ahead and check the box for this document, so I can bring up its related contextual documents tab. Because over here in the Share and Track group, there it is, email a link, click on it, and it will want to access my Outlook program, which, is it safe? Do you trust it? Yeah, I'll go ahead and click Allow opens up the email, copies the link right to the document, the co-author document, into the body of the message. All I have to do is go ahead and address it to my coworker, K for Carrie. There it is, the email. 
All you have to do is go ahead and hit the tab key and it populates in our email address and then type in a subject, work, and then click send. And as you recall in an earlier training video, when I send it off, it just sits in my Outlook box. So I have to open up the Outlook program before it shoots it off. And I can do that by coming down here, clicking on the start button, going up to find Outlook, clicking on it, opening it up, and there's my Outbox. It's sitting right there, but give it a second or two and it'll shoot it off. And there it goes. Off to carry. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And let me go ahead and click on the link to open it up. And I can do a read-only where I can't make changes to it, or I can go ahead and make changes to it by selecting Edit, clicking Okie Dokie. Give it a second or two so it opens up. And then if it's the first time that you're opening up your document here, it should have a message bar up at the top that says, do you want to go ahead and enable editing? Click on the Enable Editing button so you can go ahead and make changes to it. Now, here's some interesting things. Okay, so I've got my document that I'm pulling off from the SharePoint server right here and I have my other document down below here. Now they both look the same, right? But there's one difference between the two, and notice the Save button. Compare that Save button back to the one that I downloaded from the SharePoint site, and notice that this one isn't like the other. It's got those little arrows. Those arrows mean refresh, so not only does it save the document, but it will refresh it with updates made by anybody else who made changes to it, okay? So there's one difference. Now I'm gonna go ahead and have Carrie access the document here that's on the SharePoint server, and show you some other subtleties here that are really helpful when it comes to co-authoring or sharing the document at the same time on SharePoint. Hey, look at that. Down below in the status bar, we have Carrie now editing or looking at the document. So I can click on that and say, okay, who's working on it now? It's me and Carrie. Let me click off. Now when she starts making changes to, let's say, the top paragraph here, let's have her change the word sky to whatever she wants. When she starts typing in text, because I'm linked to the same document through SharePoint, it'll go ahead and tie her name to that paragraph. What does that mean? Well, go ahead and hover over her name there, and it says that little pop-up. To avoid conflicts, you cannot edit this area until Carrie finishes editing it and uploads it to the server. So after she's done making changes and hits the Save button, it'll upload it, and then I can go ahead and click on, well, it's a dual button. Not only does it save it, but it refreshes it because I have nothing to save if I just click on that refresh button, which is the save button, of course. It'll pull in her information here, the changes that she made, okay? So I can make changes to other parts of the document here and just wait for that to uh, disappear. Or she can actually come down here, not save it, and work on other parts of the document, which is kind of annoying because if I come up here and I try to make any changes, I try to hit the delete key, I can't delete it. And notice up here on the ribbon, it doesn't give me any formatting options. So she blocked me out. I can't make changes to that. So if she starts typing in all these paragraphs and not saving it, eventually she's going to keep me from making any changes. So I have to say, oh, look, just focus on one part here. I mean, if it's a huge document, probably not a big deal. Let me go ahead and have her make another change in the third paragraph. And when she starts typing in some text in there, notice how it pops open. Now she blocked me out from this uh, paragraph as well. So it's like, gosh, it's like a game. Let me hurry and go make changes here or tie a change to this paragraph before she takes control of it. Hopefully she'll make change and focus on one paragraph and then quickly upload it, okay? And the only way she can upload it is by hitting the Save button. So when she clicks on the Save button, as I'll tell her to do that now, notice next to her name, you have the Refresh symbol. It just means that you need to come up here and click Refresh to be able to pull in those changes and to be able to access those paragraphs. And it gives a pop-up that says, hey, I've refreshed your document here and changes were made by another user. Go ahead and click Okie Dokie and the changes she made are in green. So from sky to clouds and from years to decade. So now I can come in here and make whatever changes that I want before she starts making changes in that uh, paragraph there. And what's interesting is that these highlights will stay there until I close out and reopen the document, or I, I notice that if I select it and I come up here in the font group on the home tab and click on the highlighter drop down arrow and say no color and then click save, it removes the highlights. Now, what would happen if we did run into a conflict? Because there is that latency time between her changes and my changes. I mean, the internet isn't as fast as we can be when it comes to typing in stuff. So I'll go ahead and have her make a change, and I'll quickly make a change, and let's see what happens when there is a conflict. I'll quickly type in sky, or sky there. And what's interesting is that it takes some time when she starts typing for the document here that I have on my computer across the internet to be able to refresh and say, hey, I'm going to lock you out so you can't make changes here. Well, too late. I was faster than what the internet could uh, calculate, and so I started making changes. You can kind of see the outline here 
of, I think, of the name that was going to pull up Carrie, that she's already started making changes to it, and because it wasn't fast enough, couldn't lock me out. So let me go ahead and have her click Save, and then I'm going to come up here and click Save, and let's see what happens. And there we go. Up here in the message bar, it says, hey, the file needs to be refreshed with updates because she made a change. And if I go ahead and click Save and click OK, it tells me that the upload failed because there's conflicts with changes made by another user. So let's look down here. I changed the sky, and the highlighted green is what she put in. So I have my change, and we've got hers. Let's go ahead and resolve it. Click on Resolve. And over here in the task pane, it says, OK, these are the changes that you made. Do you want to go ahead and accept your change or reject it and keep the change that she made? Come up here and click on Reject My Change. Well, when I click on Reject once, it highlights my change. Let me click on it again, and then it gets rid of it. And then I can go ahead and click on Save and Close and accept her change. Otherwise, I could accept my change, but it'll still leave her change there, so I'll still have Night Sky. I'll just have to go back and delete Night and leave my sky there, okay? So the accept and reject changes only affects the changes that you've made when there's a conflict, not changes that Carrie made or somebody else. For example, if I come up here on the Review tab, and I'm like, let me go ahead and go to the next change, there's nothing to change. It won't see the changes that the other person made, only the changes that you made if there's a conflict, okay? Then when I'm finished, all I have to do is go ahead and click Save and close out. Of course, my original document on my computer is still there. Let me go back to my SharePoint site, refreshes the screen, and there it is. And you can see that it was last modified by Carrie. If you haven't watched the previous training video on co-authoring in SharePoint, I recommend that you watch it because I go over the basics about SharePoint, like how to upload a document to the site and navigate around through the site. In any case, assuming that you've seen it, let's go ahead and continue on here. What I'm going to be covering in this training video is the versioning part of SharePoint. What is versioning? Well, versioning is a process of recording and storing changes made to a document over the course of its development. So, for example, if I turn the versioning feature on to the Shared Documents folder, all the files within that folder that anybody makes changes to, it'll keep track of those changes with the number, you know, a version, like number one for the first change, number two for the second change, and so on. In any case, to go ahead and to turn this on to the Shared Documents folder, I need to go to that folder by either clicking on the link here, or I can come up here in the navigation pane and click on the Shared Documents folder, because in the folder, I get the Library tab. When I click on it, I want to come over here to the Settings group and click on the Library Settings. And as you recall in the previous training video, we came down here and clicked on Versioning Settings. And this is what we're looking at here, Document Version History. This will specify whether a version is created each time you edit a file in the document library. Now by default, it's set to No. And I've got two options. I can either create major versions or major and minor versions. What's the difference between major and minor? Well, major is anything big, like adding or deleting large sections of text. Minor is, you know, updating a sentence or a few words. I'm going to go ahead and select Create Major and Minor. And then down below you get some options where you can limit the number of versions to retain for major, or you can limit the number of versions for the drafts for minor with major. So if I type in 5 here for major, if I'm on my 6 edit, so it would be the 6th version, it'll just keep the most recent 5 changes or versions of the document. In any case, I'm going to keep it simple here. And let's scroll down to the bottom, and as you recall in the previous training video, we set Require Checkout to No. That means that everybody can have access to that document at the same time. If I want to require Checkout, that means only one person can make changes to it. Everybody can access it and can view it, but not all of them can make changes to it at the same time. So I'm going to hit two birds with one stone. We're going to be covering versioning and require people to check out the document. Let's go ahead and click OK. And then let's go back to the Shared Documents folder by either coming up here in the navigation bar clicking on Share Documents, or again, over in the navigation pane, Share Documents. And then hover over any document that you want to check out, and you see that little drop-down arrow, go ahead and click on it, and you get the checkout. You also get the checkout when it's not required, but because we turned it on, we have to check it out before we can go ahead and make any changes to it. So let's check it out first, and click OK. And then once we check it out, notice that that icon has a green box over it, with a little arrow pointing down, that means it's checked out. Now to go ahead and open it up after I checked it out, click on the link, and it says, do you trust this file? Yes, of course, click OK. And there we go. And as you recall in the previous training video, the Save button had the little refresh arrows. It lets me know that I'm working off of SharePoint. 
when I save it, is going to be updating on the SharePoint site. And then I can come in here and make any changes, you know, like type in changes, something big, bold, beautiful that will be obvious to see. Okay. When I'm finished, I can go ahead and click save. And then when I close out of the document, it gives me the choice to check it in. Now, it won't save it as a version until I actually check it in because it's going to keep track of all the changes that I make, whether today, tomorrow, in two weeks, or over the course of two weeks, into one version. So when I check it in, I'm going to say no for now. So it closes out the document, then it'll give me that option to set the version. Right now, anybody else can go ahead and click on it, but because I still have it checked out, they can only view it, they can't make changes to it. So if I decide, okay, I'm done with all my changes, let me go ahead and check it in. Then I can just go ahead and hover over it, click on the drop down arrow, and say that I want to check it in. Now this brings up a good point. Anytime you upload a document for the first time, and you want to be able to go ahead and keep track of versions, it's a good idea to open it up, then save it and close out, so you can initiate the first version as your original document. And so you can see right here what kind of version would you like to check in. It's up to you. Is this a minor change, or is it a major change? If it's minor, then you have the original one, and this will be 1.1. And then you can add any comments like, we'll keep it minor, click okie dokie, and it checks it in. Then I can go ahead and hover over it, click on the drop down arrow, and look at the version history. Okay, click on that. And there we go, there's the original. And then here it is, the comments that I made, it was tweaked. And you can see that it was last modified, or I checked it back in at 5.59 p.m. Okay, let me go ahead and close out of here. And let me have Carrie Heffernan go ahead and check this out. So you can see what it looks like from my side when I try to access it, and she has it checked out. Now remember, because we're all working at the SharePoint site, it doesn't automatically update the uh, page here. So if I hit the F5 key or came up here and clicked on the refresh button, it would pick up those changes instantly. But since I'm not checking every second, I'll just go ahead and try to check it out. Carrie's already checked it out, but let me show you what happens. Because I don't have that little green box there and I try to check it out myself when it's already checked out and I click OK. It says, uh, you can't check it out because somebody else already has it. Click OK. So if I come up here and I don't want to check it out, but I want to view it, I can click on the link and it gives me the option to check it out and edit. I could try it again and click OK. But again, I'm going to get the error. So let me click OK again and click on it again and just say read only, click OK. It opens up and it only allows me to view it. I can't make changes to it unless I check it out and I can't check it out because Carrie already has it checked out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close out, ask her to make some changes and set the next version. Okay, my page refreshed here. She checked it back in. Let's go ahead and hover over it and click on the drop down arrow and take a look at the version history. Click on it. And there we go. Okay, there's the first version, the original. There's mine with the comment tweaked. And the comment she made is that she got rid of the second and third paragraphs. Well, let's go ahead and click on the date and the time to view this version and click OK. It opens it up and, well, she did. She got rid of the second and third paragraph, a little bit of white space there. And if I want to make changes to it, then I can go ahead and check it out, which I can because she checked it in. So it's not giving me any errors, okay? And then when I'm done with any changes, you know, deleting, adding text, I can go ahead and click Save, Close Out. I do want to check it in now. And this can be a major version, minor version, some more changes. Click Okie Dokie. And there we go. We added our change to it, minor change. In any case, you get the idea. Now this training video is a continuation on from the previous one about versioning because here, once you have all those different versions, wouldn't it be nice to go ahead and compare two of them? For example, as you recall in the previous training video, we have the co-author SharePoint document that when I hover over it, I get the drop down arrow that I can click on and take a look at all the different versions by clicking on version history. And I have a total of four, including the original. What I want to show you is how you can compare one version like the original to, let's say, the latest one where you can go ahead and accept and reject any changes between the two and be able to save that document to your desktop. And then if you want, you can upload it back to the SharePoint server. Let's go ahead and close out. And to go ahead and to compare the versions, the first thing I need to do is to check out the document here. Because as you recall in the previous training video, I set up the requirements that in order to make changes, like tracking the changes between the two documents and accepting and rejecting, I need to go ahead and check out the document first. Let's go ahead and check it out. Click OK. And then I can go ahead and click on it to open up the document. 
Once it's opened, if you watch my combine and compare training video, it's pretty much the same in that. Just come up here, click on the review tab, go to the compare group, click on the compare drop down arrow, and there's the two basics, compare and combine, which is just dealing with documents on your computer, not on the server, but up here is what's connected to the SharePoint server, the versions. So I can go ahead and take the latest document that I have here and compare it to like a major version or a specific version, not the last version because it would be comparing it against itself. So let's do a specific version and let's do it to the original here, okay? Go ahead and select it, click compare, give it a second. It opens up and there we go. We have our two windows over here where we have the original version and then the latest and then the differences over here between the two. And you've got the title bar with the generic title. So after I go through and accept or reject these changes, I can then go ahead and save it to my desktop. Now notice down below how I have a flashing uh, document here. Let me go ahead and click on it. It opens up and it tells me of the uh, original version, version 1, and you can see it right there, that hey, there's a newer version available. Well, of course there is 2.2, and I'm in the process of comparing it. So I can go ahead and close out of here and just ignore that one, okay? And go back to my uh, compare results 1 document here. And then, just as we learned in the Accept and Reject Changes training video, come up here on the Review tab to the Changes group, and go ahead and click Next to the first change, and say, well, I'm going to reject that, gets rid of it, go to the next one. I can accept it if I do. Well, it keeps the word Changes. Go to the next uh, change, and go ahead and reject that. And then it says, do you want to start over? I can say yes. It didn't find anything else, so that's what I'm left with. If I like what I see, when I click Save, it's going to save it to my computer not to the SharePoint server, so come up here, click Save. There's my desktop. I can go ahead and say this is my final doc. So I can keep it separate from the SharePoint server and just say this is what I'm looking forward to seeing when everything's done or finished. Click Save, and then I can go ahead and close out, go ahead and close out, and then minimize this down to the taskbar, and you can see that it was saved to my desktop. So I can go ahead and double-click to open it up, and you can see it doesn't have the refresh button here, so it's not tied to the server. And then anything additional that I need to make changes to, like let's go to the Review tab and click on Next Change here. And let's go ahead and reject that change. And then go ahead and click OK. And then click Save. Close out. It didn't update anything on the server. That way we can keep those versions protected. And then if I want to, I, of course, can go ahead and restore my... Uh, SharePoint site back open, and then if I wanted to scroll down, add that document to the SharePoint site, and then call it my final document, separate from the original document here that contained all those different versions. This training video is a continuation on from the previous one, and the previous one was a continuation on from the previous one before that about versions. Here I'm going to show you how you can merge versions, which, by the way, is what we did in the previous one when we compared. Well, we'll do it again here, but in a different way. And also, I'll show you how you can go ahead and compare one version to another. I know we did it in the previous training video, but I only did the last version to the original. What if you didn't want the last in the original? What if you wanted something in between, two versions in between? Well, let me show you how you can do that. First of all, I need to go ahead and check out my document again, because between the last training video and this one, I checked it back in. So as a review, click on the drop-down arrow, and before I check it out, let's go ahead and look at the version history, click on it, and we have a total of four versions. And let's say that I want to compare uh, version 1.1 to 2.0 and combine it. Not just compare, but combine it, merge it, okay? So there's the four versions. Let's go ahead and close out, and then let's go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow to check out the document, click OK. Once we have it checked out, then to go ahead and open up those versions, click on the drop-down arrow, go back to the version history, and then click on the versions that you want to open up and that you want to either compare, as in the past training video, or combine and merge, as what we're going to do in this training video. Which again, not to split hairs, but even though we compared it in the last training video, they still were merged into one document that we saved to our desktop. But again, this is a different route. And also, I'm showing you how you can go ahead and compare these two, anything in between the original and the latest version. So let's go ahead and open up 1.1. By clicking on the date and time, click on it, click OK. It opens it up and it says, hey, there's a newer version available. Do you want to compare it to that? No. Let's just leave it. And I don't want to restore it because if I do, then I can't open up another version of the document here. So let me come back down here, click on the uh, Internet Explorer button, and let's go ahead and click on the next major version here, 
2.0 or we can do 2.1 I mean from 1.1 to 2.1 let's do that click on that link click OK give it a second it opens up now you can see that I have two buttons down below one is for you can see up in the title bar 2.1 and this one when I click on it is 1.1 okay cool so now that I have both of them open I can go ahead and combine them how do you do that well again if you watch my compare and combine document training video you will remember that up here on the review tab you go to the compare group click on the compare drop down arrow now we're not doing anything with versions we're going right to combine and I can't combine anything that isn't open and I've got the two open so the original document will say is 1.1 click on the drop down arrow and scroll down and there it is 1.1 version because we have it open select it then come over here click on the drop down arrow scroll down to there's 2.1 and you can see I'm talking really fast because I had a lot of sugar. In any case, once we have these two compared, let's go ahead and click okie dokie. And it opens up and there we go. There's 1.1, there's 2.1. Cool. And the difference is over here in a generic title because when I go ahead and accept or reject the changes, I can save it to my desktop. And if I want, I can upload it back up to the server. Otherwise, this is just my version that I can save to my computer and not have it up and being shared on the SharePoint server. So again, Going back to our Accept or Reject Changes training video, you want to come here on the Review tab to the Changes group, click on Next to go to the first change, and then go ahead and click on, well, Reject and Reject. Let's start over, click OK. There's nothing else to change. Now that I'm done, be sure to save my work. Where does it want to save it? Not back to the SharePoint server so it doesn't interrupt or overwrite the document that I have there with all those different versions, but I'll save it to my computer, OK, on my desktop. And I can go ahead and say, Let's type in my finale 2, okay? Click save, go ahead and close out, close out, close out, close out. Minimize that down to the taskbar, and there it is, my finale 2. Double click to open it up. It doesn't have the uh, little arrows next to the save button, so you can tell it's not tied to the server. It's on my desktop. Well, that's where I opened it from, on my computer on the desktop. Cool close out and if I want to go ahead and upload it back to SharePoint here just click on the button to restore it and then of course scroll down click on add document and follow the steps that we went over in the first training video the basics of SharePoint and how to upload the document which was the co-author training video on SharePoint now if you watch my training video on co-authoring using SharePoint this training video is pretty much the same I mean it's co-authoring except instead of using SharePoint, we're going to be using the SkyDrive. What's the difference between the two? Well, using SharePoint, you have to pay to get it set up. SkyDrive is a free Microsoft service. They give you so many megabytes of free online storage to go ahead and share your uh, files or documents like this one to anybody else that has access to the Internet and whom you give permissions to simultaneously. So you can work on this document at the same time, one, two, or as many other people are working on the document, as we learned in the uh, co-author SharePoint training video. Except, we're going to be using Microsoft's free service. First of all, we have to sign up for it before we can go ahead and upload this document to that SkyDrive. And why do they call it the SkyDrive? Because it's a drive somewhere out in the sky. Well, anywhere there's internet connection, it's out there. That will go ahead and store your uh, document, too. I mean, it's actually probably at Microsoft's headquarters, this uh, server that they store your information on, but it seems fancier if you call it somewhere in the sky. You don't know where it's at. In any case, let's go ahead and sign up for this free service by coming up here, clicking on the File tab, going down to Save and Send, and coming over here and clicking on Save to Web, which coincidentally, once we sign up for the service, we'll come here to save any files, or Word documents in this case, to the Sky Drive. So you come over here, you can go ahead and click Sign In, but instead we want to be able to sign up for a Windows Live account because you need a Windows Live account to be able to have access to their SkyDrive. So go ahead and click on it, unless of course you already have one, and it's pretty simplistic. I mean, go ahead and read their terms of use, which you can scroll down to the bottom here and go over their Microsoft Service Agreement and Privacy Statement. In any case, there's only a few fields that you need to fill in here, like your email address, or if you don't have an email address, Windows can provide one for you, and then your password, first name, last name, other information, not too big of a deal here unless you don't want to give your birthday out. In any case, once you sign up for it, let's go ahead and close out, and you have your email address, username, and password. Then come back here, again, File, Save and Send, Save to the Web, click Sign In. I'm going to go ahead and type in my username here, and then the password. And then I'll go ahead and check Sign Me In automatically, click OK.
once you're signed in, you can see that the folder there that's on the Sky Drive, it's the uh, Documents folder, it's a shared folder. All I have to do is go ahead and click Save As, give it a second or two, and then it pulls up the window. And notice up here in the address bar, has a bunch of numbers and then like a little symbol there, dot .documents. That means that that's the document folder on the Sky Drive. So all I have to do is go ahead and give it a name or keep the name that's up here in the title bar for the document. And just click Save and it'll save it right to that uh, Documents folder, which by the way, I already have a document in there called Milestones. Then once it's done uploading to the server, how do you know? Well, down here in the status bar, I don't know if you saw it, but you can go ahead and rewind this video. It has a little bar here that says it's uploading to the server. Okay. Now once I save this to the Sky Drive, let me go back to the File tab here and go down to Save and Send and click on Save to Web. How do I go ahead and go to that website to be able to see and work with all the documents or files that I uploaded to the Sky Drive? Well, it's right here, that link, Windows Live Sky Drive. Go ahead and click on it. Opens up the site. Let's go ahead and log in with our Windows Live ID again and password. And then we'll check Keep Me Signed In. Click Sign In. And it's a lot like the SharePoint uh, training video that we went through. I mean, you got your navigation pane over here that you can jump around to different folders, like the Documents folder. When you click on that, it takes you to the Documents folder, which we're already in. And then you can come down here and click on the Documents folder link there. Opens it up, and it shows you all the files that I've uploaded to that folder. And this is the latest one, Co-Author SkyDrive, which I uploaded or modified two minutes ago. Now, if I want to go ahead and share this with my coworker, Carrie, all I have to do is go ahead and check the box next to the uh, file that I want to share. And then over here in the right pane, go ahead and click on the share link. And then we can go ahead and type in uh, the email address to Carrie. And then, of course, you can include a personal message. Here, the box is checked by default that recipient can go ahead and edit the uh, document that we're sharing with them. And we can also check if we like that the recipients must sign in to view it. I'm going to go ahead and click share. Give it a second. I'll shoot off an email to that uh, email address. Then I'll have Carrie go ahead and look at it, make changes, and I'll work on it as well simultaneously so you again can see what it's like to co-author to go ahead and work on the same document at the same time. She says she signed in, so let me go ahead and click on the link to open it up so I can work on it at the same time she is. And when it comes to viewing a file that I uploaded to the SkyDrive, I can either go ahead and edit it in the browser, so I don't have to have Word on my computer to be able to make changes to it, but the changes are limited to a few uh, features that we can make changes to, as opposed to opening this uh, file on the SkyDrive in Word. Let me go ahead and open it up in Word, click on it. Click OK, I'm OK with that because I trust it. Give it a few seconds. And there we go. Let's go ahead up in the uh, message bar, click on Enable Editing, and by the way, this is the same thing that um, we're going to go through if Carrie sent us an email with a link. We get it. We go ahead and click on it. She may have us to have to log in, or in this case, we didn't have her log in. She can just go ahead and click on the link and have immediate access to it. Okay. In any case, it's a lot like the co-authoring in SharePoint, if you watch that training video, where up at the top in the Quick Access Toolbar, you have the Save button with the green arrows. That means in order to be able to have the changes update in the document here that somebody else made, or in this case, Carrie, we have to go ahead and click the refresh button, which is also the save. So if any changes we make, we click save to go ahead and update this on the Sky Drive as well. So let me go ahead and have her make some changes. And just like in the co-authoring SharePoint, you get the same thing. It says that Carrie's currently working on this part of the uh, document, this paragraph. That's why it's got it selected. And if you want to go ahead and hover over it, it says to avoid conflicts, he cannot edit in this area until she's finished editing and uploads it to the server, meaning that she's done making changes and clicks Save. So if I go ahead and try to come in here, notice how all the formatting features up here on the ribbon, they're boink, gone. So I can't, you know, change anything. In fact, I could double click and try to delete it. No, can't do it. So she can go ahead and continue editing different parts throughout the document without saving it, in which case she's going to be tagging it just like a game. Whoever gets their name and be able to make the changes here, nobody else can change it until that other person saves it and uploads it to the Sky Drive. How very annoying. Okay, well, in any case, you can work it on the same time, but in a way you can't because once they tag it and they're working on it, it blocks you from working on that part of the document. Which, by the way, if there's any conflicts, like I hurry make changes here and she hurry makes changes and we click save, if you watch the co authoring SharePoint training video, it shows you how to resolve conflicts. You get this little uh, task pane over to the right-hand side, and it says, hey, we've got a conflict. You can go to your Review tab, 
and accept or reject the change that you made. It won't work on the changes that somebody else makes, but only that you make. If you reject it, then it keeps their changes there. Even if you accept it, it keeps your change and their change. You just have to accept or reject your own changes, okay? Let's go back to the Home tab. And then again, down at the bottom, this is also in the uh, co-author SharePoint training video. You can click on the uh, status there for how many authors are currently working on this document or sharing it at the same time through the SkyDrive. Click on it, and it's me and Carrie. All right. So I'll have her go ahead and click Save, and then it takes a while because the Internet might be slow. It may take 20, 30, 40 seconds before you get this little refresh button that says, OK, Carrie's done working in this paragraph. You just need to refresh, and it's coming up here, clicking on those green arrows, which coincidentally is also the Save button. Click on it, and it says, OK, changes have been made. Click Okie Dokie, and it highlights the change that she made in green, so crossing the night. There's no accept or reject options to here. If you don't like it, then you'll have to go ahead and delete it and change it to something else, um, back to strobing the night. And again, if you want a little bit more detail here, then I went over it in depth in the co-author SharePoint training video. Here, we're doing basically the same thing, but using the free service that Microsoft offers, the SkyDrive, okay? When I'm done, I can go ahead and close out. And notice how my document is still selected here. It's checked and Carrie can edit it. I can click on the drop down arrow and say now she can just view it. She can't make any changes to it because she's annoying me. I don't like the changes that she's making. In any case that won't take effect until after she logs back out there. And then just to navigate around through the folders here you can go ahead and use the navigation pane over to the left hand side. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.